Hey, welcome to The Art of Code. My name is Martijn and what you see here is a bunch of points and a very common task in science and technology and also in computer graphics is to figure out a curve that goes through all of these points. And now there are multiple ways of doing that. Like one way would be to just draw a straight line segment between each different point, right? Well, now you have a curve that goes through all of the points, uh, but it's not it's not smooth, which is which is maybe not so nice. Uh, so there's different ways of doing this. Um, so you could you could draw a Bezier curve between them. You could draw uh, like a let's say a piece a piece of a sine wave between all of them. Uh, and there are numerous different ways to do this. One way is called a Lagrange interpolation, and it's a pretty neat uh, algorithm. And I thought I'd make a video about it. Uh, so if that interests you, then definitely stick around. All right, I'm going to code this thing not like I normally do in Shader Toy, but in Desmos. Desmos is a uh, is a free online graphing calculator that is a really cool tool if you have anything to do. Uh, with with technology uh, uh, where you need to model things with functions, then Desmos should definitely be part of your of your tool list, uh, in my opinion. So uh, I went to Desmos here, and you don't need to log in or anything. You can just follow along. So uh, I would implore you to do that if you really want to know how this works. Okay, so I go to Desmos.com. I click on Graph and Calculator, and then I get this. Um, uh, this canvas here and then over here I can fill in my functions. So let's make some points that we want this graph to go through, right? So I call these points, let's say the first point is A and I can I can say A is at 0, 1. Um, hang on. I need to, oh, I equals obviously. So there's my point A, and I'm going to make my point B is at uh, 1, 1, let's say. And my point C is at 2, 0, maybe not 0, uh, 0 0.3. And my last point, point D, is at uh, position 3, 0 0.5, let's say. And so now I have... A bunch of points here and I want to construct a curve that goes through all of these points okay um, and so the way I'm going to do that is uh, I'm going to do that by using multiple curves and overlaying them on top of each other and each curve for each point I'm going to make a curve um, uh, and then later I'm going to add all these curves together to make the final curve and the curve that I'm going to make for each of these points is a curve that is that goes through through the point and at every other point it is zero. Okay, so uh, so I'm going to make a polynomial that that goes that is zero at every other point and it is uh, one uh, at at this point, let's say. And so how can I do that? Uh, well. Uh, it, you might remember that you could do something like this. If you have, um, uh, if you have something like this, where you say, let's say, x minus one. So x minus one is a curve that is zero at one, right? Because if I put one into here, then you get one minus one. That is zero. Uh, and this is a first degree polynomial. But if I want to make a second degree polynomial, that is zero at another place then I could say x minus three for instance now this this curve is going to be zero at one over here right because if I put one into this then I get one minus one then this whole thing turns to zero and so if the, and because these are multiplied then my entire function is zero and similarly at point three that happens right because if I put three in there then this term goes to zero right three minus three equals zero um, so what I can do uh, for for our first um, for our first basis polynomial, uh, which is the polynomial that let me just get rid of this, which is the polynomial that is 
uh, that is 1 over here, and then it's 0 here, here, and here. Well, I can just make, make a function. To make a function that is 0 where, where this happens, right? Where, where, where this point is, where point B is, I can just say, OK, well, give me x minus the x coordinate of point B, right? Minus this coordinate over here. So that is minus um, uh, B point x. That's how you write it. So now I have a function that is already 0 where, where, uh, where, uh, where the x-coordinate of b is. And now I also wanted 0 over here and over here. Well, that's simple enough. So I can do x minus c dot x. So now my function is 0 here and 0 there. And then to top it off, I'm going to do x minus d dot x. Okay. So now I have a function that is 0 uh, at all of the other points, but it's not uh, like it doesn't go through that point, right? So how, how do we do that? Um, well, let, let's just see where, where, where it hits, uh, where the value is right now. So right now, the value is at minus 6, right? So, uh, so if I could divide this entire thing by minus 6, then I would get to 1, right? So let, let's just have a look at that. So if I divide this entire thing by minus 6, so now this is 1, right? But, I mean, this is a hard-coded value, right? Like, this only works because, because, my, uh, because my first point is here. If I move my first point around, uh, then it doesn't go through that point anymore. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to make that dynamic, right? So let me just go back to here. So here it says... Uh, it's minus 6, right? Well, what, what is that? Like, how did, how, how did we get to minus 6? Well, minus 6 is just this formula with minus 6 plugged into it, right? Or, sorry, with 0 plugged into it, right? With the, with the, uh, with the x-coordinate of, like, of, of a plugged into it, which is 0 in this case, right? So if I divide this entire thing by this entire formula, but instead of x, I plug in the x coordinate of this. Okay, so let's see what happens. So I do, so um, I go a dot x minus b dot x, right? That is this first term here with the x substituted by a dot x, and then uh, times a dot x minus c dot x times a dot x minus d dot x. Okay, so now I have uh, basically the same thing, uh, but but it 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 takes into account where that x is. You see, now it doesn't take into account where my y is. That that doesn't work yet because uh, like if let 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 let's say because right now that works because my y is at 1. But if my y is at 2, you see, like, it still, it still goes through 1. Uh, and, that, and in order to get around that, I'm going just going to scale this entire, this entire polynomial to, to fit that, right? Because I can scale, I can, I, can, I can stretch it out by multiplying this, right? If I say times 2, right, or times 3 or times 4, you see, then I can scale it. And so, by what factor do I need to scale it? Well, <clears throat> this is the normalized version that goes through 1. So I just need to multiply it by uh, the y component of my first, of my first uh, point, right? So I can just go a dot y times this, right? And now I have a polynomial that is 0 at all the other points, right? And it doesn't matter if I move it, it's still 0 at exactly that point. So it's zero at all the other points, but it goes through the point that I want it to go through, which is pretty cool. Um, okay, so and like and, and this, right? Like this would like the a dot y could also be in front of this entire thing, right? So uh, this is just this is just a stretch factor basically. So let's call this um, let's call this L one. Okay, L subscript one. That like that is this polynomial. So now I need to make an L two, L three, L four, and L five, or uh, all the way to four, right? So let's do another one. <clears throat> okay, so for the second one, 
I mean, it's the same thing, right? So we might like, but now we want a polynomial that is zero here, it's zero here, it's zero there, and it is, and it goes through this point, right? So, uh, well, zero at the first one would be x um, minus a dot x, right? Like that one goes through zero over here times, and now the second one we we will skip. Let me zoom in a little bit. Uh, the second one, the second one we'll skip because that's where we want to go through. So the third one will be a minus c dot x, and then times, uh, not a, x, and an x minus d dot x. Okay, so now I have a function that is zero here, zero there, and zero there. And now I just need to make it that it properly goes through, through this point. Uh, and so first I need to normalize it so that so that what what is here right now gets all the way to one and so i do that by plugging in plugging in the second point into this into this formula here so the second point would be uh, b dot x minus a dot x uh, times uh, b dot x minus c dot x times um, uh, b dot x, b dot x minus d dot x. All right, so that is to that is to normalize it. So now like at this point at it goes through one, okay, but I still need to make sure that it gets multiplied by how high this point actually is, right? So I have to multiply this by b dot y. So times b dot y. Okay, so that would be my second, my second one. So now I have a function that goes through this point and it's zero at all of these other points. So call, let's call this one L2, L2. Okay, now let's do it again for the third one. So the third one would be, uh, let's first go like make one that goes through zero over here, over here and over here. So that is X minus A dot X times X minus B dot X times x minus d dot x, right? We look like we're skipping c because for c we want it to go through, uh, we want it to go through one first. So we do that by normalizing it, right? So we do c dot x by plugging in c dot x into this function, right? We divide that by that to normalize it. So c dot x minus a dot x times c dot x minus b dot x times c dot x minus d dot x. And now we see that at the third point, it goes through one, right? Here it's one. And now we need to scale this entire polynomial so it doesn't go through one here, but it goes through this point. And we, we do that by multiplying this by c dot y. Okay, so now we have this one. And now we're going to do the last one. Oh, first, let's call this one L3. L3 equals that. Okay, and now we have to do the last one. Again, same thing. So uh, the first one, we're going to make a function that goes through zero at a dot x, which is that. It goes through zero at b dot x, which is this. It goes through zero at c dot x, which is this. And that's it, right? A, a b, and c, because d, we want it to go through that point. So first, and again, right now it's like really high, it's at plus six. And so at first we're gonna normalize it so that at this point it goes through one and not, at, and not through six. So we do that by dividing, by dividing by six, right? But in order to make it dynamic, I'm just gonna plug that value into the, into the function. So I'm gonna do, and what, which value? The d dot x, right? We wanna plug this value in. So we're going to plug that value into this formula over here. So that is d dot x minus a dot x times d dot x minus b dot x times uh, d dot x minus c dot x. Okay, so now we have that normalized. And so now this goes through one over here, right? Or almost one because I suppose that is almost uh, yeah, this is not entirely three. So, uh, but 
you get you get the point. So now it goes through one, but it doesn't. It, it, we don't want it to go through one. We want it to go through the height of this point, right? And the height of this point is this value over here. So that's why we multiply this entire thing by d dot y. And so now we just turn this one off. Now we have our last uh, basis polynomial. So now we have a bunch of polynomials that, like each of them, go through a successive point, right? So uh, let me just change the color of this one. Okay, so the red one goes through the first point and it's zero at all the other points. The blue one goes through the second point and it's zero at all the other points. The green one goes through the third point. Uh, let me see here. Where am I? Uh, I suppose this one. Oh no, I just turned it off. Okay. Uh, the green one goes to the third point and and it's zero at all the other points and the purple one goes to the last point and a zero at all the other points. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add all of these together and let's see what happens here. So uh, L1 plus L2 plus L3 plus L4. Uh, oh yeah, and L4 doesn't exist yet because I need to make it over here. L4 equals that. And now let's turn off all the other ones. And would you look at that? So now we have a function that goes through all of these points beautifully. So yeah, so you can use this. This is called Lagrange interpolation. This is very powerful if you ever need to interpolate something like for instance I don't know like so I'm in game development and computer graphics so you could imagine that we're looking at at um, at a terrain from the top down and these are points of interest and now we want to make a camera that like flies through like flies from one point of interest to another point of interest let's say uh, well then you could use Lagrange interpolation to to do that um, or you could use this to draw certain shapes you know, or to bend, uh, to bend the surface uh, in a certain way. So yeah, so this is one of many different types of interpolation you can use. I thought I'd make a video about it. And, um, and if you like this, please like and subscribe and, uh, and comment below any cool things that you make with this. And in either case, I will see you 